Good evening, fellow Nigerians. My name is Smart Mado Ajaja. I was the AAC Delta North Senatorial candidate. I am not speaking to you today as a party man or as a member of any political party. I'm speaking to you directly as a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I have paid prizes for Nigeria from nearly at birth. When the Civil War broke out in 1967, I was five years old. And during the process, both parents were ill. I started making tough decisions as a very young child. In my very presence, in my very presence before my eyes, my immediate senior brother died because of Nigeria. Because the soldiers had taken over all the hospitals. And uh, my hometown is Abavo, about uh, 48 miles to Onisha, from where the center of the civil war was, the epic center. So there are some of us who call for war, who talk about war, 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 war. They didn't see war. The war did not take place in their hometowns. The theater of war was not in their regions. The situation in Nigeria is so dire right now. I lived in the north, eight years in Kano. I have a scar to show for it. The Kano riot of 1991 nearly took my life. My very good friend was murdered right in my very presence. The two of us were captured. They slaughtered him first. And then when they were through with him, they came for me. I took the knife with this. I don't know what I did. I know I took the dagger from the guy, but whatever I did with it, I don't know. I have been punished severally for Nigeria. About 1988, I went for an NMPC interview in Kano. I was the first. I applied to be an industrial nurse. Of all the candidates who took, who took part in that test, I came tops. But guess what? I was not employed because they said I was from Delta, uh, Bender State then. And that the quota for Bender was filled. And uh, they said the only quotas left was for those from River State and Kano State. Now, I'm, I'm a, a trained registered nurse. So I guess they had to wait for that unborn registered nurse from Kano or River State in order to fill that vacancy or the vacancy that existed that I should have taken. So which means that if anybody needing special care was sick, they had to wait or they had to die before those two children were born. You can imagine that nonsense in Nigeria. Returning to Delta State after the 1991 Kano riot, I met the same situation in Delta State, in my Bender State. You had to be from one particular ethnic group in order to be given employment. If you did not know anybody, you will never be employed. I had to work in a private clinic that I never thought that I would work before eventually I went to Guinness. What are we trying to say here? Nigeria is messed up at all levels. Today in Delta State, is, uh, I'm from Eka. You see all kinds of pieces of trash from my home Eka. They are the ones occupying government positions now. Because my own thing is I am not out, never have never been out to tell anybody what he or she wants to hear, except it is the truth. Nigerians are very allergic to common sense. They defend all kinds of evil when it is benefiting them. They become activists when they fall out of favor. That is why I don't take the likes of Fayoshe and uh, Fanny Kayode seriously. They were governors and uh, ministers of uh, aviation at one point in time or the other. 
the same thing the same changes that they could not implement then are now what they are uh, luring our young people they want to slaughter our young people you know why they have sent all their children out i am lucky by sheer hard work to, to be in the united states my children are here i can go to nigeria and run my mouth all i want knowing fully whether my children are secured in the u.s i want to warn our youth i really want to warn as much as i want this revolution i will hate any nigerian youth to die Algeria had a revolution. Nobody died. The Egyptians had a revolution that removed them, Mubarak. Nobody died. But guess what? The amount of ammunition in Nigeria and how much mercenaries there are in Nigeria right now is scary. I ran a campaign covering nine local governments in Delta North. I know what I saw about how much mercenaries there are in Delta North. And I believe it's the same situation everywhere in Nigeria. Uh, they have circled the whole place. These are French-speaking mercenaries with AK-47. So what I'm trying to say is this. I would prefer to be part of a revolution where we will use dick and not uh, white man's guns and uh, tanks and uh, armored carry, uh, personnel carriers because they are out to once again take our resources in exchange for arms. Who pay the price? We. So that is why. A lot of the people who are out there coming, they want to be revolutionaries. They are not honest. They have appendages of businesses attached to what they are doing. So we must be very careful. If we can, I see what is going on in Malawi today. You see how genuine it is. Nigeria is a very complex, complex diversity. Driven by people who are dishonest as leaders. So we must not follow these people blindly. That is where I have problem with some of our young people. When you tell them something, all they hear, they hear slogan and just run with it. You need to question. Question me. If I'm telling you, let us go and kill. You need to find out the rationale behind what I want to accomplish before you commit to it. We must be careful. Any revolution, any war that is not planned with concerted, committed people, we lead nowhere but chaos. It is time we advise ourselves. Nigeria is messed up. This, this is not a joke. Seriously messed up. But we have to take time. And uh, the first revolution that uh, we want to do, uh, mental revolution, how we think. Why is it that uh, we, are, we have developed this affinity to darkness? It has to start from our own immediate environment. How did you vote in the last election? Did you vote for the right person to emerge? Even starting from the party primaries, did you collect money to vote for the wrong man? See, this the type of, the revolution must be intellectual. It must be mental. The revolution revolution these days should not involve running of guns. Shooting of guns is mostly perhaps the last resort when everything else fails. But come to think about it, every war that started off of a negotiation table where did it end at the same negotiation table so things that could have been avoided you have caused all that damage to human and um, uh, human lives and properties then you come back later to be negotiating then you are an idiot so a lot of our revolutionaries a lot of those who want to make history these days are not honest about what they are doing i must tell our people let's be very very conscious our consciousness must start from the way we think we must start from our head why did i finish school and i don't have a job but the same person who has made me jobless comes up to run for an election he gives me one thousand naira i'll go and vote for him the guy who said look i don't have this money to give to you i have these ideas to share you dump him and vote for darkness and then you turn around and start blaming who blame yourself first so this type of revolution it must be first of all mental until we aggregate to reach that critical mass of conscious people that will say okay now it's time we got to move and when the people come together with honesty nothing 
Nothing can stop them. As I see right now, so much divisions within Nigeria. A lot of competing interests. Let us leave this at here right now. But I'm preparing for a bigger discussion on Africa. Why Africa must unite. If Africa doesn't unite now, I tell you, Africa will be colonized and enslaved forever. Africa has everything, the richest continent, but yet the poorest people on earth live there. We need to start asking ourselves questions. God did not punish us. As, according to those who use the Bible to say that uh, we are children of uh, whatever they call him, that uh, we saw our father's nakedness, that God cost Africans. That is bullshit. Nobody cost Africans much more than what they have been doing to themselves. We have to wake up. We need to ask ourselves questions. For some of us who live in the West, we went to school here. You come every time you are the best in your class. All, all the time, for the most part of it. So why is it that we cannot take these things back home and make it work for us? Why is it that we have so many engineers who cannot even build roads? Who cannot fabricate uh, um, a frying pan? Something is wrong with us. And it, it borders on leadership. God bless Nigeria.